Hey, it's Randy from UC Status. Welcome to another episode of Ditch the Box. Today I'm going to show you a phone that I've already shown you before. It's the C450 HD from Audio Codes, but you'll see that there's a difference. This one has actually got a little appendage along the side. It's the new sidecar for Microsoft Teams. So just a little tour of the phone itself, just for those that are unfamiliar. Uh, Audio Codes has gone for the more traditional PBX phone style um, on these and they've actually um, kept with the physical buttons, unlike their new phone, the C470 HD, which was in my last video, and then some other devices from other vendors like Poly and Crestron, they've still kept on with the physical keys. You've even got that little tactile uh, nib over the five key for uh, accessibility um, needs and that kind of thing. Just to go through the actual buttons themselves, you've got a volume up and down, mute, um, headset, speakerphone, the actual dial pad, a back button, an OK button. This is a D-pad for navigating around the screen, a menu button to get at the menu behind, a voicemail icon or a voicemail button that's actually lit up to indicate that I've got a voicemail, a de dedicated contact button which goes into people, redial to redial the last number, a dedicated transfer button, and a dedicated hold button. Along the screen itself, you can see I've got a notifications area, and this actually notifies you that you've actually got a voicemail. Likewise, if you've got something in your diary, a meeting that's upcoming, it will display that in the notification area there. If you want to clear the notification area for uh, things like missed calls, voicemails, and that sort of thing, you can press clear or just press the X to actually dismiss that message itself. On voicemails, it's quite useful. Um, if I press play, it will actually de go directly to the voicemail and play that back. If I want to call the caller back, I can just press call back to call them back. And then if I want to delete that voicemail, I know I've already listened to it, or I know um, it was only for a couple of seconds, for instance, I can just press delete and it will be gone. Of course, I've got the calls button, which takes me to the calls UI. I've got a people button, which takes me to my contacts, the calendar, which takes me to my calendar and all my meetings and of course the voicemail button as I explained a second ago. Of course I've got the time and date along the top and I've got the avatar of the user and the status indicator and if I press on that it brings up a side uh, menu, gets out the connect to a device uh, experience so you can use that better together over Bluetooth. You can set your status message of course, you can get it hot desking and then get it at the back into settings themselves. And of course, you can press uh, on the available button there and actually change your status from available to, to whatever you, you wish. But really what's the key on it, on this one is the sidecar itself. So attaching the sidecar takes a little bit of disassembly. You've actually got to take a panel off the side of the phone itself. There's a couple of screws along the back and that exposes the ports. So effectively you slide and plug in the sidecar into the port on the phone itself and then to actually make sure that they're married up properly, you again put a blanking plate or a back plate on the back and a couple of screws to make sure it doesn't uh, go anywhere. The phone itself has a stand that slides on and the sidecar has, an, it has a, a small stand as well. You don't necessarily need that stand, but if you were going to daisy chain multiple sidecars, and I believe it's up to four, uh, for instance, you could you, um, become off balance quite quickly as you start to kind of expand this a, a bit further. So in that case, you probably want to use that stand maybe on the last one in the row itself to make sure the phone stays upright. So the sidecar UI, it is just a touch screen. It's actually taking advantage of a second screen experience on Android operating systems. So this is the screen one, and this is screen two. And then there's some stuff inside that actually makes sure that the contacts themselves actually appear on this second screen. The contacts on the sidecar uh, aren't actually um, added to the sidecar itself. All this is doing is showing you your speed dial list. So to add a contact to the sidecar, effectively all you need to do is add a contact to your speed dials. And you can do that in a number of ways. You can obviously go and do it from the desktop client and they will appear on the sidecar. And to me, that is actually the easiest process. But if you really wanted to add a contact on the sidecar UI, I'll show you that in a second. One thing to say about the sidecar is there's no way to actually order the contacts on the sidecar 
they actually appear in the order at which you've added them. So there's no alphabetization of this of the contacts themselves. So as you can see, I added Marty first, then myself, then James, and so forth and so on. There's no rhyme or reason to the way they're actually added. Another thing that's missing from the sidecar experience, in my opinion, is button emulation. So if you've been working in PBXs and telephony as long as I have, you'll know what button emulation is. And that's the ability to, to make a button on the sidecar do something um, very easily. So on the three pip phones from Audio Codes, notably the 445 HD, has a color sidecar built into the phone itself. There's only a certain number of keys you can get at. But to actually add a contact, you press the button itself, and that actually brings up a, a submenu. And that submenu allows you to either assign a speed dial, assign a BLF, or actually uh, assign a button. So you can actually have a dedicated button, for instance, to put yourself on DND, another dedicated button to reset your status. Right, so to add a contact, again, it's quite easy. I press the contacts button, and that takes me into the people. And then from there, all I have to do is press the plus button, add to a directory, press in there to search. Now I'm going to search for a contact, tap on that, press to tick next to speed dial, and then press the tick at the top to confirm user added to the group successfully, and moments later the contact should appear on the screen itself. So now I've actually got the uh, the contact added to my sidecar. So to take advantage of the sidecar, I'm gonna pop a call into this uh, actual phone itself. Right, as you can see, I've got an incoming call. I've got a little light there, and then I can just press accept. I'm just gonna press mute quickly to make sure that we don't have any squelch and feedback around the room. Right, so if I wanna consult first, I've got to press the menu icon, and then I've then the transfer key there. So as you can see, that's popped up a soft key from the bottom and I've got two choices. I've got a transfer now, which is the same behavior as this button here, the blind transfer experience, or I've got the consult first button. So I'm just gonna press consult first. Then you've got a consult then transfer UI there. The call that you're on is actually on hold while you search for somebody in the directory or choose from somebody from the list. So I'm just gonna press Marty McFly. You can see it's placing that call to Marty. Right, you can see I'm actually consulting with Marty McFly while the call from Dagobah is actually on, on hold. So from here, if I wanted to resume that call with Dagobah, I could press the play button here to actually go back to that original caller. If I want to complete the transfer, all I need to do is press the transfer button it pops up a little cons confirm question. I press OK. And then that completes the transfer. And that's it. That's the consult transfer. The blind transfer is exactly the same. You just press the button and the call goes away. So there you have it. The sidecar experience for the Microsoft Teams phones. Audio Codes is only one of two vendors that actually have a sidecar. Uh, I think this is a great addition to the actual Teams phone experience, particularly for reception users or users that transfer calls often. It would be nice if there was a, the option to actually add um, button emulation or whatever you want to call that. Uh, but I think this is a good experience for now. The other thing that I think needs improvement in particular is the fact that you can't choose the order in which the contacts appear. People that, that answer and transfer calls often would probably get familiar with the layout of the phone and the contacts on the screen, but I think it's a bit of a fail to actually have to remember which screen they're on. So again, if I added more contacts to this screen, it would overflow to another screen and I would have to use the arrow keys to go back and forth between the screens themselves. So I'd have to remember which screen those contacts are on. So as I stack more sidecars uh, along the side of each other, it could get quite confusing quite quickly. But all in all, I think it's a great addition to the Teams phone lineup. And of course, Audio Codes was there to listen. Their other phone, the 445 HD, which isn't Teams native, it's still a compatible three pip device, has a built-in sidecar again with all that button emulation and some other stuff as well. This second screen experience is, I guess, the next best thing. So if you're after a sidecar and you're an audio code shop, uh, the C450HD is the one for you. I'll pop the model number of the sidecar on the screen during the video itself in post, 
but this is the experience you want. And that's all for now, and I'll catch you in the next video.